Today might be the day that we will finally have a good working 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler on our hands. Meet the one and only Fantex Glacier 1360 MP. It has fans, it has a radiator, it has tubes, it has everything what an all-in-one should have. But it can also do this. Wow! Okay, so what we got here today is one of Fantex, I guess, first all-in-ones, don't quote me on that. It's called the Glacier 1 series and it comes in a 240, 280 and a 360 variant. And there is a special edition in white with RGB fans. But before we get into the details, let's quickly go over the specs. The Glacier 360 comes with a 27mm thick radiator. The corresponding fans are called Fantex MP120s, but instead of the regular 120 MP radiator fans, Fantex decided to beef them up with some steroids, creating a set of 120mm fans that spin at 2200 RPM, push 60.51 CFM with a crazy static pressure of 3.41mm of H2O. Whoa. Each of the fans runs with a controllable 4-pin PVM connection, which is daisy chainable. So you will be able to hook each fan to the last one and run all of them using a single connection. The tubes are 400mm long, sleeved and surprisingly bendable. In terms of compatibility, Fantex made sure to include almost everybody with every LGA 1150-something, 1200, 1366, 2011 and 2066 on Team Blue, while on Team Red we get AM4 and the TR4s. The installation is as standard as it gets. For Intel, use the included backplate, screw in the appropriate spacers according to your socket, put the water block on top and screw it down. That's, that's basically it. For AMD, replace the water block metal retention ring thingy? by rotating it and replace it with the other one meant for AMD. Then remove the pre-existing black brackets, screw in the AMD spacers, place the water block on top and screw it down. Easy peasy. For the pump, Fantex went with the latest and greatest 7th gen Ace attack, spinning at max 2000 RPM. And can we just admire for a second how freaking thin that thing is? Underneath that sits a big copper block with some pre-applied thermal paste. I have not seen this yet, but Fantex includes an additional tube of their thermal paste in the bag of mounting hardware. So if someday you need to reinstall it somewhere else, you want to upgrade your CPU, or, or you just want to repaste it because it's been a while, you can do that. How thoughtful. Additionally, you will also get a 2 to 1 PVM splitter, so you can run all of the fans and, and pump and everything from the same header, a PVM extension, a RGB adapter and a small little surprise. Okay, that was basically the general stuff. Now let's get to the really cool part about this. The removable water block pump cover. Huh? How cool is that? <laughs> now this is the only piece in here that comes with RGB. Unfortunately, it uses a proprietary port that needs to be adapted using the included RGB adapter. But once that's done, you will be able to create a pretty cool lighting show with a bit of RGB at the top, bottom and a kinda square infinity sign mirror in the center? I don't know, but it looks amazing. And before anybody gets confused, on the website manual and even on the box, it says DRGB or digital RGB. It's just standard 3-pin 5-volt RGB. Once you adapt the proprietary connector, it ends with the standard 3-pin header. Please stick to the globally accepted terminology. Okay, so when I first unboxed this, it became very clear that this is not some budget shit barely holding together. Everything here is thought through and high grade. The fans are sturdy. The tubes feel nice. The water block looks like it could survive a freaking bomb. And the RGB cover on top fits on nicely and the magnets that keep it in place are more than strong enough. And it's more than that. Fantex even cared about the little things. Like the additional thermal paste for example. I've reviewed quite a lot. Oh, you can see them. There are, there are a lot of boxes. I reviewed quite a lot of water coolers in the past. Yet this is the very first time that I have some pre-applied and I have an additional tube. And then they included three of these. Those are clips that keep your tubes aligned. Kinda like, like the clips that you get with braided cables. And this is such a minimal thing, yet it can make 
and make a huge optical impact. Just look at the difference. And in my opinion, at least one of these should be included with any all-in-one you buy. Very thoughtful. But Fantex is not done. They even care about the packaging. It's really robust, which can be quite useful if you need to pile it up. And you get a cardboard with a thank you message. Sure, the packaging does not tell you anything about what's inside, but if you take this box, open it up, you, you just start off with a positive feeling. Whereas with other pieces, you go like, well, if they didn't give a shit, why should I? I don't know. I... I think it's important to represent your product accurately. That is, if it can keep up to the promise. So let's take a look at that. We put the Glacier 1 360MP on our test bench using the usual Ryzen 3700X locked at 4.7GHz and 1.4V on the V-Core. Then we reeled it with heavy load and waited until the temp settled. At 100% fan speed, the Glacier 1 360 managed to keep the 3700X at 69 degrees C. Finally, Finally, we have a good performing 360 in the studio. That, that took way too long. Now, usually I would just pump everything to 100% and go for max performance. But the fans on this thing are crazy powerful. With 3.41 millimeters of water, the static pressure on these is the highest I have ever seen for an included fan, by quite the margin. So from the get-go, I was 100% sure that for the very first time, the fans will be the strongest part of the chain, or at least not the weakest. That being said, crazy fan performance usually comes at the cost of crazy noise. And let's just say it's... it's pretty loud? Not the worst I've seen, but okay. But that noise might not be that big of a deal, cause the fans are crazy strong. And let's assume they are too strong, meaning that the red can, can't keep up with them. So we turned down the fan speed to 50%, which made the fans un basically unhearable or absolutely acceptable in a working environment. This made the 3700X stay at 72 degrees C, so a mere 3 degree rise by cutting the fan speed down to 1100, which is really not a lot. And can we just admire that even in this state it is still better performing than anything else on my benchmark list. Okay, now, now it's time to see how far behind the red is. So we normalize the fans with our Arctic P12s and uh, 69 degrees C. Well, this basically proves that my assumption was true. I know that my P12s are not as good as these stock fans. I know that. Therefore, because the temp stayed the same, I can now strongly assume that the red is giving up way too early. And I can prove that. With 6 P12s stacked in a push-pull config, the temp stayed at exactly the same, 69 degrees C. And to make it even more fun, I turned down the fan speed to 50%, which made this absolutely unhearable with the cute 900 RPM that the P12s are pushing at that point. And all of that still produced 69 degrees C. So now we can clearly see that Fantex went completely over the top of these fans. The performance of the product as a whole is really, really good. That's still 5 degrees C underneath Aza Blizzard 360. But the radiator is just not keeping up. That, that, that's quite sad, especially because it's the first time I saw it. Oh, and I'm always saying radiator, but it could also be the water block that is just not able to dissipate the heat into the water, though I have not seen a big increase or decrease in cooling from one water block to the other one, assuming that they are made from the same material and style and whatnot. But a radiator can have a huge impact. So again, I'm just assuming here, but, but hey, today is a good day for my assumptions. Okay, so now let's not so smoothly transition into the what could have been better segment. Because it's, it's kind of a weird one. I do think Fantex made a really, really good product here. But I also think that they overpowered one aspect of the product to such an extent, the fan, 
that the other part, the radiator, looks really, really bad. And it's only because it is the fan. Let's say you have an overpowered radiator. Great, you have some headroom. Slap a better fan on there and you can use it. But with a fan, it's you won't be changing the radiator, so, so how will you use it? And it's even worse for the, for the average user that doesn't know that the red is underpowered. In such a case, I, I would say the fan curve will end at some point at 100%. Maybe not, not that late. At that moment, he will have a jet engine running next to him, whereas he could have a nice sounding leaf blower without losing any cooling performance. And I tested this, setting the fan speed to 75% makes the fan way quieter, not unhearable, but, but very alright. But it also produced the exact same result. So, how I see it, you would have two possibilities. A, make the red thicker, like the Arctic Liquid Freezer, 38mm or whatever, but bigger, or different fins or whatever, but improve it. And this would basically create a hell of a product that could keep the sun cool. Or B, include weaker fans, which will end up with exactly the same temperature, but way quieter. And based on the fact that for most cases out there, a 27mm red is compatible by standard, using a weaker fan would seem to be the more logical option. But in case anybody now thinks I'm saying it's bad, no, it's, it's not bad, it's really good. The fans are just too good. Okay, then there is also another thing that I think should change in the future, and that can even be done now. The way that Fantex designed all of this is that you have a removable piece that sticks onto the water block. And this creates a nice looking design out of the box. But this is held in by magnets, which makes this interchangeable by a freaking child. Why are there no alternative covers? You made something that in... Hmm, I'm too stupid. You made something that in theory is customizable to the largest extent. Show me any all-in-one where you can completely replace the piece that is almost solely responsible for the all-in-one's design. So you created this customizable design, but there are no designs. I'm, I'm kind of exaggerating here, but I do think that Fantex should release a whole line of different covers. RGB, mirror, text cutouts, or go all-in and, and put a freaking monitor in there. That would be amazing and make this basically compatible with any theme build out there. So, to recap the Fantex Glacier 1 360MP. Amazing quality, plus one for these tube holders, very good performance, nice design, everything can be run over a single PVM header and ARGB, even though you need to adapt it. And there is nothing really on the negative side. You could say the noise level of, of the fans, but that's kind of debatable, because you are pushing more than you actually need. Uh, so I would say take the fan radiator issue and the alternative cover more as a suggestion. On the price side, it is surprisingly alright. 170 euros or 170 dollars is alright for the performance and quality that you are getting here. Not as low as budget stuff, but also not as high as NZXT's ridiculous price tag. On that note, this should be it for the Fantex Glacier 1 360 MP. At this point I would like to thank Case King for providing us this amazing all-in-one and I will leave some links to Case King and Amazon and manufacturer and whatnot down in the description below. And don't forget to check out the written review over on our website cause we, we are still doing those. And now I still have a ton of b-roll footage that I don't want to go to waste so just sit back and enjoy it. Uh, oh, and make sure to be subscribed to not miss the next all-in-one because I have an Arctic Liquid Freezer 360 ARGB incoming, so that one is up next. And, oh, and uh, comment down below what you think about the alternative cover idea. I just want to see how many people are interested in such a thing.